Hey, I'm Jenny Williams with Get a Real Estate Life, and we are preparing for a CE class next week called Avoiding Violations, um, something that we all love to attend every two years. But we get to hear juicy stories uh, and share how uh, we all handle them. So today I want to welcome my very special guest and real estate broker, April Sharp. Hey, April. Hey, guys. I'm so glad to be here with you today. Well, your um, information is going to give us um, a lot of edge on our class um, for CE because um, it's so good to hear straight from a broker on what kind of situations that you see every single day, what you're dealing with mm -hmm. in the market. Um, it's fun being a broker out there and, uh, you know, mainly what makes you so valuable is, you know, you're putting out fires every day and helping agents do that. Mm -hmm. so with that being said, what is, you know, the, the, the main issue that keeps popping up right now that you see a pattern with? Well, I think the main issue that we're seeing a, a, an issue with, and I think it's across the board. I'm hearing it from so many different places and so many different brokers is the, the actual contract. I think a lot of agents don't understand our new contract, our new board contract. And um, basically when you put not having a good understanding of the contract, we're seeing the most at this point and out in our market. And then there's so many other contracts like, as you know, LAH has their own contract. Realty South has their own contract. We've got a lot of contracts coming at us. Um, and then, you know, we're looking at our contracts on our phones when we're, you know, walking into appointments. Um, I think as a busy realtor, truly busy realtors, are, we're all guilty of scanning rather than reading. And I think that iPhones have not been our friend in this situation. Um, you know, when, when we're looking at something and it's so small and you think that you think you have it in your mind that you know what it says and you don't really know what it says. I think that that has become a, a pitfall that we all are, are needing to make sure that we're not getting getting caught up in. Well, especially with experienced agents, because, um, you know, they have or we all have in our mind what we always worked on before. Right. Right. And like I said, that, that, that thought that we think we know what it says. So, um, you know, the new inspection contingency that's in the new contract, I, I have found that if I ask five different agents what it says, I get five different answers. And, um, you know, I think that it's really, really important that we're paying attention to those time frames. Um, I co-opted with another agent not long ago and said, you know, we really need to watch these time frames. And um, so it came time to set up the septic and that time frame had lapsed. And he said, well, that doesn't apply to, to the septic. It applies to a secondary inspection. And I said, well, we need to go over the contract. And, you know, it just about killed me when he said he was going to, literally be up that creek, <laughs> um, you know, what, where, where do we stand? And, you know, when, when there's a relocation company involved, there's, we don't, we don't have a whole lot of room to maneuver all of those time frames, And we all want to make sure that we're keeping our clients compliant on their contract. Right. Well, and they were relying on the agents to before they sign it, um, you know, to guide them through. So um, I guess what you're saying is that contracts, how they're written and how they're interpreted is probably your biggest issue right now that you're running into. That's the biggest issue that I'm running into. And even talking to seasoned agents, some of them having a different answer than, than how the contract reads, you know, I think that we all need to to really, especially since we're in a season of CE and risk management, we need to make sure that we're tightening up on, you know, our risk management as far as we are, who our clients are depending on. If we're not understanding it, we know we're not explaining it for them to understand it. And, um, you know, that's this is how we add value as realtors. 
Well, you're absolutely right. So your best advice with that, um, you know, would be to do what? Well, if you, I mean, you know, we all know we're guilty of this. And what I started doing, and I've recommended some of my agents to do, if you really are just scanning and you catch yourself and you don't know exactly, if you have to print the contract out to look at it, make sure when you go to explain it, we are in, you know, we're in a climate of e-sign where it's just awfully easy to shoot it on. And then you hear back from your client later. I didn't understand that. Well, when they don't understand it, you know, that falls back to us. We are the experts here. So, um, you know, it, it's an, it seems like such an easy thing, but it seems like something that while we've been so busy is really tripping us up. Well, I agree. And something that I'm just seeing, and um, I mean, I'm, I'm a, a broker of of one. I only have to be responsible for uh, myself and for Jody. So, <laughs> and luckily, <laughs> he is um, very easy. He follows all the rules. Um, but what I keep seeing as far as people I'm supporting in the marketplace is the e-signatures are really starting to become an issue because. I feel, and maybe you're seeing this too, that consumers don't take it seriously because we don't have it printed out. We're not making it that ceremonial signing of the offer like we used to do where we explained, you know, the ramifications of everything because we are just shooting it out there. So are you seeing people walk away from contracts? We are. We're, you know, what I'm saying across the board is we have a, there's a lot of indecision out there in the market. Um, believe it or not, we're seeing a whole lot of people go under contract and saying, I've changed my mind. Um, I, you know, is it the grass is greener on the other side of the fence syndrome? Maybe, maybe I'm missing something else that's better with inventory being low. It's almost like, you know, they're like, they're, they feel like they're settling and then they, so they're, they're not committing as hard. And then they're, they're really having some second thoughts. Um, and, you know, again, I have a lot of agents calling saying, you know, how do I get my client out of this contract? Well, we know the new board approved contract reads that the seller has to be allowed to make the repairs. But then on the other hand, realty sales contract says that if anything is, is not, um, satisfactory, that the buyer can just walk. So again, we come back to what did, what did the contract say? And, you know, as the agent, you are the go-to person to answer that question. So compact, you know, a new contract, a lot of indecision in the market and all of us scanning and not even knowing what our contracts might say, you know, that's kind of a recipe for a lot of risk management issues. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a great time to be a broker. So hats off to you for dealing with all of that. And yes, I it, it really is a great time to be a broker. And, and you know, all kidding aside, your all of your brokers love you. We don't just roll our eyes when you call. We much rather you call than make a mess and call us later. So, um, you know, we, we really do love hearing from you and we work hard to, to work it out for you. Um, but I think that, like I said, we're really, really going to have to start conditioning ourselves in a different way as far as scanning these contracts in our, in our minds and maybe put some other, some other controls in place so that, so that these aren't big issues. Well, or maybe even have a checklist of, Hey, this is what I've um, encouraged my client to agree to doing. And this is what's expected. Um, I know some people have used um, a, a contract checklist like that, that kind of give like a, a summary. This is what you've agreed to do. And these are the timelines. Um, it, that may be uh, an excellent way to handle that as well. But I mean, what I'm hearing from you is it's, you can know everything there is. You can have tons of experience in the marketplace. You can have the best business, but you are only as good as your interpretation of the contract that you've agreed your client to, um, you know, enter. 
So, right. So avoiding risk would be getting to know what that is and knowing what it says pretty much is what um, I'm hearing you say. So what other issues have you been having? Um, well, you know, inspection has become another another issue because a the new contract, you know, we the contract reads differently than we've we've seen it read in the past. And the fact that, you know, sellers sellers are entitled to have a choice to make the repairs if you are using our bar approved contract. Um, you know, you need to watch your timelines. You need to realize if you don't if you miss a timeline and you're out of contract, what that could potentially mean for your client. Um, another thing with us all being so busy, you know, we're seeing um, people agree to repairs. We, the agent, you know, I, not long ago, I personally had a contract where they provided us with a receipt where the repairs were done. And it was, you know, $4,000, you would assume that the repairs were done. We went to do our walkthrough and just looking at those items, half the list was not done. We were closing the next day. Um, I've also had some situations come up with some of my agents where the closing went ahead and happened and they were provided receipts for the repairs and the repairs weren't, weren't what they thought they were. A, they didn't, they didn't realize that the repair was not done correctly. And B, you know, they agreed to do the repairs. They never provided them with the receipt. Um, if you're asking for an HVAC to be serviced and, um, and if anything, you, you need to follow that up with any, if any problems are found for those problems to be repaired. Because basically, if you're asking for a receipt after closing, oh, by the way, could you provide me with where that was serviced? They send you the receipt, you've already closed, and it says, oh my goodness, you needed a new compressor, that was $800. Your buyers are going to be looking at you saying, what? You know, we asked that the home inspector did their job, you know, we don't need to let it fall down on our watch, I guess is the biggest thing I need to say. We need to, you know, we're, we're being paid and being paid well to make sure these repairs are done. If we're doing everything right and writing up our addendums right, we've got to make sure that we're getting corroborating paperwork that says that it's done to your client's satisfaction. Um, and we need to make sure that we're writing it up to begin with, Jenny, to make sure that it, it covers to your client's satisfaction. Because if you just ask for a service on an HVAC and it needs a new compressor and you haven't asked for it, they're not, con they're not contractually obligated to do it. And then again, like I said, you have your client looking at you and, you know, even if it's, I mean, you know, in our, in our seller situations, they're like, well, you know, you're my listing agent. They didn't ask for this. And you're looking at them saying, no, they didn't ask for that. So we wouldn't assume we have to do it. Um, you know, we're just really needing to be a little more on our toes with those kind of things to manage our risk. And I'm, I'm glad that we're in, in, in the season as busy as, the, as this year has been, that we are in a season to kind of step back and take a couple of risk management classes and think about the way we've been doing business, even the way we do business busy. Well, I agree. And any other tips that you feel that um, you need to share for this room full of people taking the well, I know that everybody knows to really be careful with their earnest money, uh, to turn it in right away. And, um, you know, the main thing, I think if you all, if you continue to educate yourselves, continue to be on top of your game, if you're too busy, you know, take a deep breath, print out a contract, realize, never get too busy to, to lose sight of what you're being paid to do. Um, you know, that a lot of that manages its own risk, Jenny. Well, that is true. That pretty much sums that up. <laughs> Thank you for um, letting me borrow you and share real world. Um, I think we learn the best from real world situations that are happening currently instead of hypotheticals. Um, so. Thank you for sharing your professional expertise with us. I always appreciate you and definitely appreciate this. So. Well, thank you for having me. And guys, remember, if you have an issue, call your broker. Don't wait. <laughs> thank you. Bye. We sure Bye. will. <laughs>